resolve doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. Turn him round and round all you like. Tith's still gonna be ugly. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. What else is there to say? That's the Bullhead Court. Folks defended themselves there with shields, not words. There's only one way to send a brick fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the force crawling with windbags. The calamity was mercy for more moves. The windbags ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze, or starve, or face the kid. Fresh out of health tonics. <laughs> well, windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. Kid can't hardly tell up from down after a while. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want is a warm place to stay and a decent meal. Calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days.
Cinderbrick gave him enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. But the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. His plane gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works.
blasting everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past is history. say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man. But he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. <laughs> Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up. But he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. like the kid, the walls kept Zelandia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the earth, you name it. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too.
the city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found, either. So what did the kid do? Why he wouldn't ride on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, Nobody's ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him.
finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven. He and no one else. Thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. Marshall seemed like a good man, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Ah, uh, come on, give the little tiger a break. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the Marshalls kept a wary eye on him. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this.
that survives a musket shot ought to be quick work for that blade. Self. Well, not entirely. to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them. No matter how high we build. Kid takes another drag. There's something you should know about the kid, but let me take it from the top. Just don't get any sharper than that. You want to tune a scrap musket, you start with the barrel. 